guys, thank you for clicking on my video. Today, I'm going to tackle the number one question I get on TikTok, which is, what do you use for frosting? Well, I use American buttercream. And I know some of you may be quick to be like, ooh, that's too sweet, I don't like that. But it's only a few ingredients and I have some tricks and I'm gonna walk you through it to show you how you can make buttercream that's absolutely delicious and not too sweet. And like, I feel weird, like, you know, bragging, but I'm so proud of this buttercream recipe. The only thing that I do want to point out is that in this video, I'm making a massive batch. It was enough to cover an eight inch cake and a six inch cake that I stacked together for a two tiered. So in the description, I'm gonna put different batch sizes so you can choose what you need. Regardless of how much you make, the process is the same. So I hope you follow along. I hope you find this helpful and let's get started. All right, let's talk ingredients. You need confectioners or powdered sugar. The brand does not matter. Same with the butter, but you do want to grab unsalted butter because then you have a little more control over the flavor by adding your own salt. Now for the vanilla, I use clear vanilla because I like my buttercream to be as white as possible and regular vanilla extract has some color to it. When you add food coloring, it can affect that. For your salt, you don't need anything fancy, just your regular old table salt. Last, but not the least, is your heavy whipping cream. This is what really makes your buttercream have that amazing smooth texture. You can use milk, which I will talk about later in the video, but I strongly recommend having heavy whipping cream. Really quickly on the ingredients, salt, that's going to take some getting used to. As you make more buttercream and you're used to tasting it, you'll realize, okay, you know what, maybe I could use a little less salt, maybe I could use a little more. That's why I don't have a specific measurement for you because it's really your preference. Worst case scenario, you can always toss some in at the end. So I would recommend starting with like a small pinch at first. And that's purely one of those ingredients that's to taste. Now, the heavy whipping cream is like the, the most important thing. Using that thicker cream just makes it so smooth and wonderful. It just makes the frosting that savory melt in your mouth. And I don't know if there's a scientific reason for this or not, but I'm convinced it reduces the sweetness of the frosting as well. So that's a big part of why I use it. If you don't have it, you can use milk. Some people just use milk. You can even use coffee creamer if you want, which is crazy. I thought that was crazy, but cool. You can use half and half, anything of that nature. So. Don't panic if you don't have heavy whipping cream, but I promise you it's better with it. All right, let's keep going. For additional materials, you're going to need a microwavable bowl, a spatula, the paddle attachment, and the um, mixing, whisking, whatever it's called, attachment. <laughs> For measuring, you're going to need one cup, one tablespoon, and one teaspoon. Oh, and don't forget scissors to cut open your bags of sugar. I also recommend using a standing mixer. We can get started by adding our butter to a microwavable bowl. That part's important. Did you know that you can use the wrappers to line your cake pans if you don't have parchment paper? Since I'm making the large batch, I have eight sticks of butter. So I'm putting it in the microwave for a whole minute to soften it, but this will have a lot of factors. It depends on how strong your microwave is and the amount of butter that you're heating up. So I'm gonna show you in just a second what it should look like when it's fully softened. And here it is. Your butter should still be solid, but you'll notice that there's some completely melted areas like this. Let's plop the butter into your mixing bowl. Make sure you scrape everything out. And we're going to use the, again, what is this called? The mixing <laughs> attachment. Start on the lowest setting. Once you're sure the butter won't just fly out if you turn it up, go ahead and crank it up a notch. Continue to work your way up on the speed and remember to scrape the sides as needed. Once it's a bit mixed, we can start to add the vanilla. I have eight teaspoons because again, I'm making the large batch. Now for salt, this is how much I am using. Just keep in mind, that's for eight sticks of butter and almost four pounds of sugar. Now let's work our way back up. Now 
Notice that I increase the speed as it becomes more mixed together. I didn't show that I had been scraping the sides, but once it looks all creamed like this, you can go ahead and stop. Change to the paddle attachment. A standard batch needs seven cups of sugar. This has seven and a half. I'm doing a doubled batch, so two halves is one cup. So rather than measure out 14 cups of sugar, I'm just gonna remove one cup and then look, I can dump in the whole bag. I hope that math makes sense to you. Um, if it doesn't, just measure out 14 cups or however many you're doing for your recipe. Now, I don't sift the sugar. I have never had a problem with clumps. Just start on the lowest setting. And once it's a bit, what's it called? Um, a bit mingled, <laughs> you can start adding some of your liquid. Don't add all of it. I would say add about half of it and continue on slow. Now, add more of your sugar and do the same exact thing. Start on slow because this will poof into the air if you don't. Okay, at this point you're probably thinking like, wow, she's changing the speed very frequently. I just wanted to pop in and give you like a little a little reasoning for that because I don't want you to spend a lot of time trying to be like, okay, let's switch from a stir to a three and then back. Like, There's no algorithm for this. You don't need to memorize it. Basically what you want to do is always start on low, stir together until all the ingredients are incorporated. Then kick it up a notch until you're really whipping it together. The more you whip American buttercream, the more white it's going to come out, which becomes really important when you start adding food coloring. And the other piece is that at the end, most importantly, leave your mixer on with the paddle attachment on the slowest setting because that will help you get rid of air bubbles. I leave it on that setting for about 10 minutes before I even use it. it. Makes a huge difference in the consistency. So don't get overwhelmed by all of this changing of the speed. Essentially all I'm doing is starting low, working my way up, add more ingredients, start low, work my way up. There's no right or wrong, just get a feel for it. Now I'm adding some more liquid, continuing on low until everything is combined. That's the word I was looking for earlier when I said mingled. I really needed combined. <laughs> hey, just popping back in to emphasize that a point is really important and that is adding the liquids. So everyone has a preference for how thick their frosting is. You may like it to be thicker, you may like it to be thinner. Keeping that in mind, you may want to modify what I put in the ingredients for how much cream to add. So that's why it helps to add it little by little and kind of test it out as you go. What I put may be a great starting point, but as you get more comfortable, you may want to modify. So just wanted to say that. <laughs> now let's crank it up. The more you mix this and the more you whip it, the more white it will be. Don't forget to scrape down your sides every now and then. Just flick the switch for a second when you need to move the attachment so that you can scrape where it was. Now take a little spoonful so that you can try out the texture and taste. After trying mine, I decided to add a little bit more liquid. You always want to finish by mixing on low for an extended period of time. I sometimes do 10 minutes. That will get rid of all the air bubbles. So let's give it a final shot. See how it is. This is how it should look. And I will tell you what, it was delicious. <laughs> All right, I hope that really helped you. I hope you enjoy this recipe. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments. You can also message me on any of my social media profiles. Everything across the board is Cake Art by Abby. And I'm new to YouTube, depending on when you're seeing this video, so I would super appreciate if you like and subscribe. More tutorials to come. All right, thanks guys, bye.